Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Quita, and if you're new to my channel, make sure you click the subscribe button below. And I hope you guys continue to come back and watch my videos. So today's video is about a story time. Um, on when I had a I had surgery while I was awake. I had a BBL while I was awake. So, um, I want to talk to you guys and tell you guys how it went. And uh, yeah, that was a crazy time. It was a crazy situation. So yeah, I want to talk to you guys about it. Uh, a lot of people don't know that I had it done. Um, it was like something that was like not really dramatic, but yeah, I got it done. So I'll tell you guys from the beginning to the end what was supposed to happen, what happened. Yeah. So, yeah, let's get into this video. So, I was originally supposed to have surgery in Miami. I was supposed to go to Me Aesthetics and have surgery. Um, I forgot the doctor name, the surgeon's name, but it was a it was a man. I was I was supposed to have surgery with him. I was supposed to have a BBL with lipo 360. And three no three years ago, three years ago I was supposed to have this surgery. And I did something very stupid. Um, I had I got approved for my surgery or whatever, and I had uh, got cleared for surgery and everything after I turned in my labs and everything. I got cleared for surgery. I booked my flight, hotel, everything. So I had did something stupid. I wanted because I had got cleared with the cell save, cell saver, and the cell saver is basically like whatever blood you lose, they like recycle it back into your body or whatever. So I was like, okay, to save money, I'm gonna try to take the test again and get my hemoglobin up higher. I decided to go take the test. I decided to go take the test while I was on my cycle. Very stupid because of course I'm losing blood so my hemoglobin is gonna be extremely low. Get the test results back, got canceled for surgery because of course, stupid, um, my hemoglobin was low. So I'm like, okay, whatever. We still decided to go to Miami. We had a whole little family trip there for a whole week. Got rescheduled for surgery was supposed to go back no i i don't i never rescheduled it i was actually i was supposed to go back but i never chose a day so um i was like, okay whatever i'm wait out or whatever so come the following year no it was like the end of the year so april was my birthday that's what i was supposed to go so i just waited it out and i was like okay i'm gonna try to get my human gummit up start taking iron pills or that or whatever so come the end of the year um my auntie she um was about to start working at a surgery clinic here where i live in milwaukee wisconsin so um uh, i'm not gonna say the name or anything because i kind of forgot anyway but um yeah so my auntie she told me about the place she was going to be working at. It was like, hey, you know, you can, she brought me pictures and stuff. And she was persuading me and she was like, you know, it's um, less um, invasive or whatever. And she's like, it's safer. You know, I trust my auntie even to this day. I trust her um, or whatever, um, whatever she say, you know, she went to school for this. She went to school. Um, she knew about, um, she went to nursing school, so, and then she's also studying under surgeons and stuff, so, you know, she would know, I trust her, her opinion. So, I told, I was telling her, like, you know, I was going to schedule a surgery to go back to Miami and get it done, but I was like, blase, and she was like, no, just get it done here, I'm going to make sure you're good, blase, blase. So, you know, um, paid her or whatever to have it done here, and... She was just telling me, like, you know, you're going to be awake when it's done. And I'm just like, whoa, what? So she's like, yeah, you're going to be awake. And, but don't worry, because I'm going to be right next to you or whatever. So I'm like, okay, cool. 
Um, then we had, um, we started going through the whole little, this, this, I did a, well, it was, I was supposed to get it done in January and then it was like a whole bunch of stuff that was going on. So they had to keep pushing it back. So I ended up getting it done. And I was supposed to have it done in December, and I ended up having it done at the end of January. So I go in, I go in a few days prior, or was it the day before? It was either a day before or a few days prior. I went in, did a little pre-op work and stuff, um, check my weight, my height, all of that, go over my health, um, look at my body, um, mark my body and asked me like what exactly what I wanted done or whatever so I'm like okay I want everything gone like everything all my fat everywhere I want to go I want to put it in my butt so they like you know the man was like okay sure you know we can do that you know you don't have much fat or whatever we have a lot to work with basically like I'm not that big they would sound like I was a perfect candidate because I'm not that big. I have fat, of course, but I'm not that big to the point where it's like, it's not achievable for them to take all the fat and then just give me the butt that I want or whatever. So we go through all that or whatever. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm excited. I'm like, oh my God, I ain't have to go to Miami. I can recover at home, whatever. So the next day, you know, they tell me instructions like, you know, to basically like get antibacterial salt and take a shower antibacterial soap before I come um don't put anything on as far as like deodorant lotion none of that you know um oh and also when I was at the pre-op appointment they gave me prescriptions for like uh anxiety and something to it was like three sets of pills it was like um antibiotic something to calm me down something to like I don't know it was like three different I know it was the antibiotic no it was the antibiotic something for pain and then it was something for anxiety or whatever so I go in the day of or whatever and I have on sweats and just like a t-shirt or whatever last year last year I think last year January is when I got it done because three years ago yeah so last year January is when I got it done so I go in the day of or whatever and I just see all these people coming in like and they just, they, you know, they look like surgeons or whatever. So like they come in with their bags and stuff. They go back there and start prepping and stuff. So I'm like, okay, I'm getting nervous and I start getting nervous. So they bring me, they tell me to bring my anxiety medication and I take some anxiety medication or whatever. And I was just sitting there chilling. You know, I was sitting there chilling for a little while. My mom was there or whatever, but she couldn't, she couldn't go in the back with me. So I'm just sitting there chilling for a little bit. You know, I'm just waiting on them to get started, but I'm starting to get nervous and stuff. So I finally go in the room and, you know, I lay down or whatever. I never got like drowsy or sleepy or anything. So I was like wide awake the whole time. I don't even think the anxiety medication even calmed me down at all. Like it definitely didn't. Cause I literally felt everything. So they they let me down, whatever. And one of the guys, he was so nice. Like, you know, he was talking to me the whole time, making sure I was okay. Asked me if I needed anything or whatever. And he just kept coming in, checking up, checking on me or whatever. My auntie was standing there the whole time in the room as well too, making sure that everything was being done right and that I was okay. So that's when they start like it's like this machine or whatever. First they take like needles and they like decide where they're gonna have like the holes at, wherever they're gonna like suction them, take the fat out or whatever. And they basically numb those areas where they're gonna create a hole at. So they numbed up the areas or whatever. It's like a little pinch, of course, because it's like a needle. But then it numbed up really fast because when they start putting like little holes in it, it was like like a little screw. Like they were screwing into my skin to create a little puncture hole. So they did it in both sides by my head, I think. They did two in my back, my upper, my lower back. And they did, I forgot where the other ones was. But anyway, 
so they do all that or whatever and i'm sitting i'm still just sitting there so whatever whatever i'm just still laying there so then they take this the cannula that's hooked up to the little machine and they start to inject lidocaine into my abdomen area so first of all let me back up so when i go in there or whatever everything that we talked about at pre-out where they took they told me that they could take all the fat and stuff out i'm like okay cool i'm down you know this so uh, this is why i was going on miami all that changed the day of this procedure so i go in and he's like we can't do all that today and i'm like well why not he's like well we just can't do it he's like you know we can either do your love handles like your bbl or we could take all your fat out out of your abdomen and your love handles and you come back and get a bbl so i'm like well if you take all the fat out how am i going to get a bbl that doesn't make sense so i'm irritated because i'm like I thought that I was going to get what I was going to Miami for and get it at home. I'm so irritated. So I'm like, forget it, whatever. Just take my love handles, whatever, whatever you can do or whatever. And I, at that point in my mind, I was already thinking, okay, they're going to do this. And when I heal, I'm going to Miami. Okay. So, you know, fast forward, we in a room, whatever. They take the lidocaine, start injected or whatever. So I feel the fluid going into my abdomen and my love handles. I like I feel it, and I feel it starting to numb up where I can't feel anything. But also, as they're taking a the lidocaine and they're injecting it, I can feel like my skin or fat or whatever separated from the muscles. Like I can literally feel it. It wasn't like it didn't hurt and it wasn't uncomfortable, but like you can literally feel it separated and that is so weird and crazy so they numb everything up or whatever and i'm like okay i'm ready or whatever so they let me sit there for a little bit because they had to make sure that everything was completely numb they had to make sure everything was completely numb or whatever so that you have one surgeon that was basically like he was like the owner of because he is he had like different surgery clinics like everywhere not just in wisconsin it was like other states and stuff too so he was there and then he was training a surgeon he was training a doctor here to start doing the surgeries you know so he won't have to keep coming here so he was training a doctor and then he had, got the other man too i don't even know who what he was but he was just there but you know whatever so and then i have my it was my auntie and then it was another lady there too and whatever so um they this is when it starts getting crazy and scary okay so after they do the lidocaine and all that they numb me up so it's time to start taking the fat out right so they start doing the love handles or whatever the guy that's in training you know they the man that owns the place or whatever he's watching the guy that he's training or whatever so he is taking a fat out wherever you know i'm cool because i can't feel nothing literally it literally feels like you're being tickled like i literally was like giggling a little bit because it literally only tickles when they're taking the fat out like it doesn't hurt at all so he's doing my love handles or whatever why everybody step out everybody step out for whatever reason i don't know what they was doing but everybody stepped out and then um the man decided because they actually they didn't even numb my abdomen area they only numbed my love handles that's it so everybody step out and the man take it upon himself like literally he was finna start doing my abdomen and the man the man that i said i don't know what he was there for he walked in and he was like what are you doing and he was like i'm gonna get the fat in her stomach and he's like no we we never numb that area up do you know how much pain she would be in if you if you start if you uh he was like do you know how much pain she would be in if you start to lipo that area she could she would be able to fill that area we only did the the love handles so I'm looking at this man like, and I'm pretty sure he looked like this girl scary, scary as hell. I was looking at that man like, 
if y'all don't come and get this man i promise you so he stopped the man and the man was like well i thought I, that i was doing her a favor by just getting the extra fat for her that's what she wanted yeah that's what i wanted but y'all didn't fucking numb the area up like had you snuck and fucking numbed the area up i would have been fucking okay with it so he tried to do that and the man stopped him whatever and then that's when the owner came in and that's when the man told him like yeah he was trying to like all the other areas or whatever so the man was like oh no so he took the candle away from him and he started trying to take over so he started um lipo and my my love handle love handles and stuff or whatever and i was i was i got comfortable at that point because i'm like okay this man he owns all these places that he's been doing this for a while so you know i'm okay with that i was okay with the man like being in training or whatever because they they was watching him but he tried to, he was one of those people where he didn't like to listen to nothing nobody tell him and he wanted to take matters into his own hands and do it on his own and i don't like that because you're playing with my life don't do that like don't do that so the man took over he started lipoing it or whatever he get my love handles or whatever so i'm cool like you know it just tickled i'm just laying there or whatever he had um took over whatever and he finished the lipo or whatever so at that point they're like okay we're gonna turn you over and you know we're gonna um start injecting the fat so they're like we're gonna turn you around we're gonna start that that's when i got fucking nervous because i'm like oh shit like Am I really going to feel this part or what? Like, what's about to happen? I was hoping that I didn't get a, um, what is it called? I was hoping that I, get a, I didn't get a pulmonary embolism. And it's basically like when they're injecting a fat and it actually accidentally go into an artery or something like that, which is, it happens anywhere, Dominican Republic, Miami, any fucking where. The good thing is that the guy that was experienced with it, he was the one that was going to do it. He took over because he, I guess he didn't feel comfortable with the other man doing it. So he took over or whatever and I was fine with that. When I tell y'all, when they inject it, when they put that cannula inside my butt area, because it was like a hole, they put a hole at the top of my back. I don't remember if they put one at the bottom of my cheeks or not. But when I tell y'all, when they start injecting that fat, that shit was, I can't even, exp I can't even explain how I felt. Just know my body was reacting to it. Like my legs was like shaking. Like my feet was like going up and down like this. Like that shit was like, it did not feel good. Like it was painful. Um, I can feel the fat filling up my butt area like i can literally feel it and it was so fucking uncomfortable it was a lot of pressure um that was probably the worst part about it all the whole time the man that i said was there and i don't know what he was there for he was like giving me a massage like <laughs> he was massaging my arms and my feet and the lady there the lady that was there she was massaging my hands and shit so i don't know what I don't know what was going on. I just know the man, he just he was massaging my feet and shit while they doing it. I guess he was trying to calm me down or trying to like throw me off. But he was like massaging my feet and shit. And I'm just like, the massage felt great as fuck. But that, I nothing could take take the pain away from me. Like, like I couldn't stop thinking about that shit. Like, that's not something that I would have just got over. So, they doing that shit. And I'm like screaming like, oh my God, oh my God. Like like hurry up please like that shit was like unreal so and the whole time i'm thinking like please don't kill me please don't kill me so they do that or whatever they finished it and then at that point my body is like shaking like i'm shaking because i'm like my like i can't believe that this just happened like i'm like shaking from like not really anxiety but like i don't know I was scared as fuck and my body was just yeah it was very traumatic that's what it was. I was shaking from the trauma so um after that the whatever they had me stand up look in the mirror or whatever to see how it look or whatever and my love handles they did like kind of like snatch my love handles a little bit they was like a little they were swollen and stuff but it kind of snatched it a little bit so I'm like oh, okay 
you know, look good. At that point, I was like over it all. I was ready to go home, so I wasn't really trying to pay attention. So, like, so that's my love handles or whatever, a little bit. Like, I don't even, actually, they didn't even get all the fat, but they got enough where I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, whatever. So, and then I look at my butt, and my butt was, like, super swollen, like, it was actually pretty big when I first got it done, but the swelling went down. But, yeah, it was, and I had a nice butt when they first, they first did it or whatever, and I was looking in the mirror, and I was like, oh, okay, it looked good, you know, and I'm like, okay, I'm just ready to go home. So, I'm leaking a little bit or whatever. And then I go home and I take the, um, I put on my little Faha right after surgery. I had to put on the Faha right after surgery so that I can start compressing the fluid and all that. I can start compressing my body so that the, um, swelling can go down. So I go home or whatever and everybody, my mom and them like geeking me up like, oh, you got a butt now. Well, I say blase. I'm like, okay. So... <laughs> I go home and I take the pain medication, which I don't really need the pain medication because I wasn't like really in pain. I was just very sore. It just felt like I worked out a lot. Like it felt like I worked out like hard for seven days a week, two days for two weeks every day, like for six hours straight. It just felt like I was super sore and my back was kind of stiff because, you know, I just got my butt done, so I didn't really know how to walk with the motherfucker or whatever. And I just wanted to take the medication to help me sleep or whatever. I was tired, and I kept waking up. My mom went and got me, got me food and stuff, so I was, like, eating carrots, celery, all that, which I learned that you're not supposed to eat diet foods. You're actually supposed to feed the fat with, like, protein and stuff like that. So, that's probably why my fat fucking died. Because, honestly, when you get a BBL, 30% of your fat is going to die. And then, if you're not taking care of it, more fat is going to die as well. So, y'all like eat celery, carrots, and stuff, crackers, and stuff like that. And I was mostly, like, in bed. So, like, when you get a BBL, you got to sleep on your stomach. You can't sleep on your back or your side. Which was making my back, like, hurt because, like, my back was, like, caving in. Like, due to an arch. And it was, like, hurting so freaking bad. So, I was taking a medication just so I didn't have to get up. And then when I ran out of fucking medication, I had a choice but to fucking deal with it. So, I took out my antibiotics or whatever. And then after that, it was just, like, me just healing, wearing my fire every day. I wasn't supposed to sit on my butt or drive or anything until, like, after six weeks. But... Me being me, I'm independent, and if I ask them to do something and they don't do it, when I ask them to, I'm going to do it myself. So, like, I think that same week, I was driving myself to go get food and shit. And I had a BBL pillow. I had a boppy pillow, which didn't fucking work. But when I had my six-week mark, I just started sitting down, like, fuck it. Like, if the fat going to die, it's going to die, whatever. I already had it made up in my mind that I was going to go back and get it done again anyway. So, but... Yeah, so, like, for that summer, I was, like, my butt was, like, looking real nice. Like, of course, I'm completely healed or whatever, and I don't have, like, a whole bunch of butt no more. Like, I got more than what I had before I had it done. You know what I mean? I'm going to post a picture or whatever. Of what I, I'm going to post a picture of what I look like after the surgery, like, what my butt, like, how it looked after surgery or the little procedure. Um, I don't have any before pictures because I hated taking pictures. So, yeah, I don't have no before pictures. But I'll definitely post pictures. I'll add clips of how I looked after surgery, like weeks after and stuff. So that you guys can see. And, yeah, so that's my story. It's like a mini horror story. And... You know, I don't regret it if I never had it done and I had, you know, and it was the offer was on the table. I would definitely do it again, hopefully with them doing everything that I want them to do. But I don't regret it. In the meantime, it gave me something to work with and feel more confident in my clothes. And, um, yeah, just know I'm getting it done again. Surgery is already booked. already have a date set and everything deposit down everything so 
yeah it's definitely getting done so stay tuned for my surgery videos for when i'm in miami and i get my bbl hopefully with this covid stuff it can still happen but i think it's gonna get canceled and i'm gonna have to reschedule but at the end of the day like i said it's still gonna happen and this is gonna happen in 2021 it's scheduled for february in february but like i said with covid may or may not happen but you guys stay tuned for more bbl videos and yeah i'll be um putting out some videos about like how to prepare for surgery and who i'm going to and just more information about this whole bbl journey that i'm going into next year so if you guys are interested in that stay tuned and i hope you enjoyed this video um make sure you like subscribe and comment and keep watching my videos because i'm coming with more videos i'm coming for y'all so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys later in another video bye